From Shirk Stadium in Reading, Pennsylvania, welcome to Albright College Football as the Lions host the Colonels of Wilkes University in Middle Atlantic Conference action. Hi again, everybody. Tom Wilms here. Thanks so much for joining us. Albright having a tough start to the year at 0-4, 0-2 in conference. Last game for them, man, a heartbreaking 50-45 to loss to FDU Florham. Good game, though, for senior quarterback uh, Jimmy LaHaye. He had a career performance for the Lions going 26 for 46, 322 yards in the air, and also threw for five touchdowns. And great news, last time he threw for five touchdowns, that was as a sophomore against Wilk. So maybe we'll see a repeat performance here against the Colonels. Kevin Zaner, he caught 10 passes for 181 yards. Tony Thorpe rushed for 91 on 18 carries. And Zach Miller caught three touchdown passes, registering 87 yards on 11 on 11 catches. So some career numbers last week against the Devils, but it just did not turn into a victory. The Lions did take a one-point lead with 20 seconds left in regulations thanks to a Philly special style of play to convert a two-pointer, but the Devils scored on a touchdown on the final buzzer to uh, finish up the game and stun Albright. Wilkes having a star solid start to their year, 4-0, and 2-0 in conference. Last game for them was last week against uh, Alverni. They picked up a 45-12 win for their first 4-0 start since 2006. Quarterback Jose Tabora finished up 14 of 25 for 239 yards and three touchdowns. Nick Yannick led all receivers with 84 yards and a touchdown on six catches as the Colonels outgained the Golden Wolves 360-304 268 coming from the air, but their defense gave up 221 yards, so that may be where Albright will be able to find a way to pick up some points. The trick is going to be for the Lions, though, is to shore up the defense, giving up over 50 points in all four games. So if they could find a way to cut down that uh, the other team's uh, offense, they should be good to go in this one. Wilkes won last year, 47-43, ending a run of seven straight wins by Albright as the Lions have won eight out of the last ten years. Waiting for everything to get rolling here from Reading, Pennsylvania. Again, Tom Wilms here. Thanks so much for tuning in this afternoon as I fill in for the week. Just taking a look at the upcoming for both of these teams. Next for Wilk, they, they return to Schmidt Stadium up in Wilkes, Pennsylvania to um, host Delaware Valley. It's next Saturday at 1. Next up for Albright, they'll go down to suburban Baltimore to battle the Mustangs of Stevenson University before coming back at home on the 26th for the 69th annual Roger Shrine Pretzel Bowl against Widener. So we'll take a quick break, let you uh, listen along a bit to the start of this one, including the coin toss going on now. We'll let you listen to the anthem, and after the anthem, we will come back, bring you the starters for today's game, and to get things rolling, it is all Bride and Wilkes coming up next. won the toss, elected to defer their choice to the second half. Albright will receive, will be kicking towards the scoreboard.
recognized for the performance of our national anthem. CAA officials for the afternoon. The referee is Patrick Wills, the umpire, Derek Roberts. Welcome back, everybody. Once again, we are live from Shirk Stadium in Reading. As we are just about ready to go, as the Albright Lions host the Wilkes Colonels. You saw the um, the coin toss as Wilkes won the toss and elected to defer, so Albright will receive. So we'll take a look at the starting lineup. First, the offense for Albright, the quarterback, Jimmy LaHaye, the senior at 6'3", 220 from Reisters Down, Maryland. At running back, Tony Thorpe, the tight end, Torian Forbes. The uh, wide receivers, Malik Bootman, Zach Miller, and Kevin Zayner. And on the offensive line, Ethan Jones, Jeff Joseph, Gio Figueroa, Jacob Banks, and Mark Anthony Ocasio. Defensively for the uh, Wilkes Colonels. Defensive ends, Pat Ritchie and Derek Schneider. The defensive tackles, Vinnie Werner and Dane Tarantelli. On the line is Gabe Algier, Cole Jesmer, Bud Moyer. And uh, taking a look at the safeties and corners, Zach Weber, Zach Neshwat, John Van Lenten, and Najir Woods. Ready to roll here as ready to kick it off is Alexander Despirito. Back to receive will be Malik Bookman and Chris Holbrook. This will go to Holbrook at the 10 yard line and he'll cut to the outside as we are underway and has a hole as he'll come around to the 40 yard line. He may be able to go, he has a couple of beat, goes to the 40, cuts inside to the 30 yard line to the 20, 15, 10, five, tripped up, touchdown Albright! A 90 yard kickoff return and the Lions Take a 6 nothing lead. Exactly the start they needed here this afternoon against a very good Wilkes program who are 4-0. But they just got knocked in the mouth by the Albright Lions. Pending the PAT. As Todd Shelley will hold. Dan Lewis. Made to try the extra point. Snap is good, everything else is good, and no, it missed, it just missed. But it is a six nothing lead. It was a 56 yard kick, but a 91 yard return. And just like that, six nothing in favor of Albright. Wow. Some great moves by Holbrook. He was pretty much held up at the 30-yard line. Cut inside, made a real nice move, and bashed some ankles together. And picks up the uh, first score of the game, not even, well, just 15 seconds in. Wow. <laughs> so we'll go the other way, as now it'll be Albright kicking off. Dan Lewis ready to boot it away. Back to receive for the Colonels is Nate Whitaker. Actually, they have three back there. Nate Whitaker is kind of the lead man. He's right in the middle. Todd Shelley will kick off for the Lions. 
Uh, it's actually going to be Todd Shelley's so that changed things up a little bit. He's listed as the punter, but his place kicking at least uh, for this kickoff from the 35-yard line, 15 seconds into the game. Again, 6 nothing in favor of the Albright Lions. Sure, the Colonels will want to respond big time right now. See, here we go. End over end kick. Driving back to the 10-yard line. Fumbled, but then picked up on a knee. He was down. Yeah, he can't advance the ball there, so he'll be stuck at the 11-yard line. As that was just muffed up a little bit. So a nice start as Najir Woods couldn't get anything rolling. And we'll take a look at the starters offensively for Wilkes. Jose Tabora, the senior. Will be the quarterback, Jeremiah Acker, the running back, fullback, Joseph Lisinski. Wide receivers, Dick Yannick and Derek Nelson. The tight end, Bright, Bryce Harrison. And on the line, Bryce Harrison, Brendan Boris, Corey Berrien, Billy Anderson, Vincent Rogers, and Mike Osei. As they are, there's going to be a penalty. They'll re-kick the ball. Didn't see the flag down on the field, but... The re-kick will come from the 30-yard line. That's good news for Wilkes. Again, they were going to start off from the 11. So it'll take an even bigger boot to pull that off as, once again, Shelley will set it down at the 30-yard line of far side hash. Cloudy day here in Reading, 61 degrees. Chance of rain at about 2 o'clock, about 50% chance. So hopefully it doesn't affect anything on the sport turf. Could get slippery as this is another end over end kick all the way back to the 10 yard line. Bringing it up ahead, Whitaker. And he'll break a tackle, and certainly much better news for the Colonels. Instead of starting from their own 11 yard line, they'll start from the 40. Continuing the starting laps, we told you the Willicks offense. How about the Albright defense? Defensive end will be Nate Steffen along with Yamir Lowry. Ryan Rapp, the nose guard. Tyler Foster, the defensive tackle. Linebackers, uh, Danny Vital, Sam Vieira, and Trevon Harris-Dorman. Safeties, Armin Jefferson, Kyle Komenitsky, and the corners, Chris Holbrook and Omar Cisse. Jose Tabora in the shotgun. Low snap, but it is handed off around the edge to the 40-yard line to the 41. Getting hit hard right away was Jeremiah Acker. Gain of one on the play. It'll be second and nine. Again, second and uh, nine from the 41-yard line. They'll bunch it up a little bit with trips to the right, but tight to the line, and a one to the left. And this will be kept by the QB. He brings it down, almost caught from behind. He'll get some positive yards. He's forced out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Trevon Harris-Dorman, credit for the tackle. Actually went out of bounds a little bit earlier than I thought. 46-yard line. So it'll be third and four from the 46-yard line. Manageable for Wilkes, but certainly all bright an opportunity to force a three and out here. So they'll spread it out with trips to the far side. And it looks like a, Wilkes will stay in the shotgun the entire way tomorrow. Back to throw, looking left, now has the right. Now he'll step up himself. They'll try to contain, but he dives forward and gets the first down. Well, it did look like Daniel Vital lobbied to push him back a little bit. But he will get credit to the 49-yard line, gain of seven on the play. So it'll be first and 10 from the 41-yard line, 49-yard line, rather, as the Colonels get into Lions territory. Four wide to the right side, one to the left. Nobody in the backfield except for Tabor in the shotgun as he's obviously back to throw, tosses over the middle, and it is caught, and a lot of room up the sideline. 
And, well, they're going to stop play. Didn't look like he stepped out of bounds. Oh, maybe he did. Schweitzerhoff was going to go to the house. But the near side official, I guess, said that he may have stepped out. At the 40, at the 39 yard line. Well, big break there. I didn't think he was all that close to the sideline. But I'm up here and they're down there. We'll be first and 10 for the Colonels. One man in the backfield, and they will hand it off. Around the edge, and they find a hole at the 30-yard line to the 25, and then forced out of bounds at about the 23. As in on the tackle with Sam Vieira. Jeremiah Acker, the sophomore. Gaining positive yards there. Well, first and 10 from the 26 for the Colonels, who are driving. Trailing 6 nothing after a game-opening kickoff return of 91 yards. And this will be handed off. They try to power right up the middle. Kamal Reed, the freshman, getting an opportunity. Head up to Kamal Reed. Uh, gain of about four on the play. we will go second and six. As he'll get to the 22-yard line. They'll spread it out again. With Reed again in the backfield. In the shotgun eye, two receivers on either side. Toss up ahead and is a diving catch, but not much of a gain, if any. Maybe about three yards. Nick Yannick. He was pretty well all alone. If he gets that in some kind of stride. He would have at least gotten the first down, if not more. Third down. So it'll be third and three from the 19 as the Colonels enter, enter the red zone. As they'll go two receivers on either side. And nobody in the backfield. Tabora back to throw. Pressure coming from the right. Here's the blitz. Toss over the middle, and that is caught. And a tackle at the 10-yard line. That was Bryce Harrison, who basically came from the tight end position pretty well untouched. Kind of stayed in to kind of fake the block, but it didn't work out for Albright as they're now dealing with a first and goal from the 9-yard line as the Colonels continue to march. Daniel Vital was in on the tackle. Again, nobody in the backfield, but now motion as they will fake the handoff and getting tackled in the backfield is Tabora. That'll go for a loss of at least two, if not three, as they'll spot it back on the 12-yard line, so second and goal for the Wilkes Colonels. This is where you want your Lions defense to step up here. You got that somewhat of a gift of a kickoff return touchdown. Well, I try to at least force them to go for three here. Nelson in motion. Rolling out to Bora into the end zone and is caught for a touchdown. End around route. Nick Yannick found his way in from 12 yards out. And we are tied at six pending the extra point. So after Stefan's great tackle, as Tabora found his way through, a little bit of a circle around around the far side. And perfectly placed pass by Tabora. So they will actually go for two. And Derek Nelson is in. And with 9.56 to go here in the first quarter, Wilkes takes the lead. It's 8-6. to six. So two completely different, well, I can't call them drives, but scoring situations as Albright gets the kickoff return of 91 yards to start, but then a great drive from Wilkes. 
And they take the lead with the help of the two-point conversion. So it would be interesting to see how Albright responds. Again, they haven't played on offense yet. They were very close to turning the ball over on punts. A couple of third and fours, third and fives on the drive. But seemingly it just did not work out. And Alexander Despirito, Despirito will be kicking off now for Wilkes. Chris Holbrook is back to receive along with Lucas Roselli. This will go to Holbrook as he'll pick it up the four yard line, try to find a hole. Did so successfully last time, gets a nice hold of the 30 yard line, but he'll just fall forward to the 31 32. And Albright will get their first drive of the game. Chris Holbrook on the return. So the drive for Wilkes 10 plays, 60 yards. Lasting four minutes and 40 seconds. And we'll see what Albright is able to pull off here. It's Jimmy LaHaye, the senior, 6'3", 220. In the shotgun. And this will be handed off up the middle. And gain of about four or five. And is able to power through. Well, it's Tony Thorpe. You'll see a pretty steady diet of his action, but he's going to come off now. It'll be second and five from the 37-yard line. So now in the backfield is the sophomore Malik Boot Bootman. And they fake the pitch out. Now they'll throw them to the slant. That's caught at the 50-yard line and cut up the middle over the 45 to the 43. First down, Albright. Zach Miller with the reception. So Albright on their first drive of the game. Doesn't take long for them to get into Colonel's territory. Getting down to nine minutes to go. Here in the first quarter, 8-6 lead for the Colonels. First and 10, though, for Albright. Four receivers with trips to the right and one man in the backfield. And that is Thorpe back into the game. Delayed handoff to Thorpe. He'll head to the outside to the 50, for the 40 yard line to the 35. Nice gain on first down. It'll be second and two. Now let's see if the Lions, usually when you go second and short like that, you tend to maybe, I wouldn't say go to the house, but maybe a aggressive pass here. No, you should. Third and two, if you go incomplete, should be able to. Uh, pick up that first down. down. Well, let's see what Albright plans here. They are marching. So again, go trips to the right. And Thorpe in the backfield. Straight up handoff here, and he only gets a yard. It'll be third and one from the 34-yard line. Tony Thorpe just trying to duck underneath a couple of tackles. Didn't quite get himself through. But now it'll be up to the offensive line to get a nice push. As fresh into the game is Torian Forbes. He'll play the tight end of the far side. And he'll be in motion as well. Third and one. Fake the handoff, back to throw. They have a man open, and it is caught at the 19-yard line. First down, Lions. Zach Miller just kind of nestled into a hole of the defense and was very patient, knowing he was about to get pounced on by a number of colonels. Made the catch, held on, and it's first and 10 for the Lions. First visit to the colonel red zone. So we're down to seven minutes left to go. Here in the first quarter. Bootman in motion. Back to throw. Looking for the far side corner. And it's just out of the reach 
of Kevin Zayner, and it's incomplete. Nice throw, though, by LaHaye. As it was pretty obvious that Zayner was going to be the only man to catch it. Just a little bit ahead of him, though. So second and 10 from the 19-yard line. As the entirety of the offense dutifully looks to the sideline for the call. Two receivers left, one to the right. And Thorpe in the backfield. Low snap, kept, slant. Oh, just a little bit too high. That was very close to getting picked off as well. A little bit of a tiny timing play. Off the fingertips of Zach Miller. So now third and 10 from the 19-yard line. So Albright gets inside the red zone, but it's stalled a bit here. See if they can figure something out. They need to get to the nine. As everyone's ready to go with trips to the right side. Thorpe in the backfield. LaHaye, delayed handoff as powering his way forward was Thorpe, but he'd be well short of the first down. He'll get to the 15-yard line, gain of four on the play. It'll be fourth and six. And here comes Dan Lewis. Oh, maybe not. So everyone's looking in, and it certainly doesn't look like they're setting up for a field goal. They're bringing Dorian Forbes as a tight end, and they are going to go for it. They need to get to the nine, fourth and six. Delayed handoff, then back to throw, and it's low at the 10-yard line, and he is a yard short. It was complete to Zach Miller, but did not get to the sticks. It'll turn over on downs, first and 10 for Wilkes. Yeah, and that was just with a little bit of pressure put on from the line. Had to release that ball, the quarterback had to release that ball a little bit earlier than he would have liked. And a nice attempt by Miller to just try to duck underneath and try to get that extra yard, but couldn't do it. And I honestly thought that maybe you go for the three and take a lead there. But it seems like they were trying to be aggressive. So it's still 8-6 Wilkes. 5.57 to go first quarter. Wilkes has a long field to work with. Tabora back to throw. Steps up into the pocket. Long throw over the middle. And it is intercepted. Armand Jefferson. Basically playing center field. Backpedaled. And made a brilliant catch. It'll be first and 10 for the Lions from their own 46-yard line. So Wilkes getting a little bit in the way of uh, aggressive. I kind of like that, but the execution was wanting. Really not much of the way of pressure on the interception by Jefferson. A couple of receivers were in the vicinity, but not really within arms, within arm's length. So a break here for the Lions. Not only do they get the turnover, they got a pretty short field to work with. Proved that they could march in their last drive. See if they can complete the job this time. Down 8-6. 5.49 left to go in the first quarter. Quarterback in trouble. Steps up and out into the pocket and then gets powered down at the 48-yard line. Maybe got a yard. Again, he was in trouble on both sides, but was able to turn it into something. So a gain of one. Uh, what turns into a quarterback keeper from LeHay. It'll be second and nine uh, for Albright. It'll be Zach Miller and Trayvon Ruffin on the near side. And in the backfield, Malik Bootman, two receivers far side as well. LeHay back to throw from the shotgun. Tosses near side, caught at the 48-yard line. Stepped to the inside, trying to get the extra yards, but unable to do so was Trayvon Ruffin. Pass by LaHaye is complete. And we'll give him credit to the 46-yard line. 
Wow, tough break. So positive turns into negative. As that was Patrick Willis, Willis our referee. Umpire Derek Roberts. Head linesman Stephen Gorski. And the judges Mitchell May, Ryan Seberg, Tim Keo, and Jared Kenya is the back judge. So instead of second at about four or five, it'll be second at 14 from their own 43 yard line. So we're under five minutes to go here in the first. 8 6 lead for the Wilkes Colonels. Bootman in the backfield as the, wide, as the running back, and a delayed handoff to him. Goes right up the middle and gets to the original line of scrimmage and maybe to the 48-yard line. So certainly much more in the way of a manageable third down. It'll be third and nine from that 48-yard line. A lot of personnel changes here for the Colonels. Taking advantage of the fact that Albright, a ton of them hand on hips, waiting for the play call from the bench. The coaching staff of the Lions recognize that. Maybe they may think about speeding things up a little bit, trying to catch the Colonels in a substitution. Third and nine. as it'll be a direct handoff, but getting tackled right away was Will Dogba. He gets maybe a yard, maybe two, but it'll be fourth down, and the Lions will most likely punt. Of course, we also thought that earlier that they would attempt a field goal. Well, maybe they'll stay aggressive. Well, Hayes also the punter, so he may pooch here. And I wouldn't imagine them trying to draw the offsides because it would still be fourth and three. All right, now this is fourth and eight from the 49-yard line. Play clock down to five, and... Looks like they are ready to call a play. Down to two, and timeout called by the Lions. First timeout called in the first half. That's the one advantage you have with LaHaye being both the punter and the quarterback is they had nobody deep, and to see a pooch punt, you get the good bounce. Could have pinned them deep. Instead, the timeout called. 3.25 to go in the first quarter. Get an 8-6 lead for the Wilkes Colonels. I want to thank everyone for joining us this afternoon. Here from Reading, Pennsylvania, Shirk Stadium. Taking a look at the upcoming schedule for Wilkes, they'll host Delaware Valley next week. Albright, they head down towards Baltimore to take on Stevenson. And the next home game will be on the 26th, two weeks from today, for the 69th annual Raja Shrine Pretzel Bowl against Widener. So make sure you come out for that one. As the Lions take on the Pride. First time out called. by the Albright Lions. And I'd be a little surprised to see them go for it. Again, fourth and eight from the 46 yard line. Certainly don't want to give Wilkes, who showed the ability to drive earlier on in this game. They want to play some field position here and just pin them deep. But again, as mentioned earlier with LaHaye, quarterback, and also being the punter. He can set up in the shotgun as per usual, take a look at what's out there, and maybe option to punt, option to pass, what have you. Doesn't look like it's going to be an obvious punting play. So here we go, fourth and eight. The timeout's over, two to the left, one to the right, one man in the backfield in Malik Bootman. Well, hey, back to throw, so they will go for it. Going deep towards the near side, has a man, and is caught at the 11-yard line. Kevin Zaner got a step, and it'll be first and goal for Albright. Gutsy call from the coaching staff of the Lions. It'll be first and goal from the nine. Clock running with 3.09 to go in the first quarter. With now Dogma in the backfield as the running back. Miller and Ruffin on the far side, and on the near side is Zayner. 
Tied it in motion. Stays in the block. Hands it off. Up the middle. And Dogma gets to about the six. And it'll be second and goal. Well, Dogma on the carry. Tackle made by Dave Allgaier and Bud Moyer. And we mentioned earlier, chance of uh, rain in this one. Wind not going to be a factor. But an overcast day here in Reading. Pass to the near side, jumping, one-handed catch! Did he get the foot down? Touchdown, Albright! What a brilliant catch from Kevin Zayner. As he got rocked in the corner, but still found a way to get a foot down for the touchdown. 2.16 to go here in the first quarter. We've seen some fantastic action on both sides. Albright takes the lead, 12-8, pending. The extra point or two-point conversion. Looks like they may go for two here. The PAT on the first touchdown was no good. So the offense stays on looking for two. In the backfield, Dogma. Tied in again in motion. Fake the hand off the Dogma. Slant play. Caught for the two points. Zach Miller just stepped up in the slant. And made a great head-high catch. And with 2.16 left to go in the first quarter, the Lions take a 14-8 lead. In every single game, you kind of have that fork in the road, that big decision that needs to be made. It happened early. A gutsy fourth and nine. Turned into a long pass to the nine yard line, setting up the touchdown. That was a six play drive, 53 yards, lasting three minutes and 33 seconds. As right now, Albright and Wilkes trading punches. So the Lions ready to kick off. Todd Shelley, a sophomore from Willow Street, Pennsylvania, is ready to kick it off. Spinning kick to the far side sideline. Oh, that's going to go out of bounds. It looked like he towed it, to be honest with you. He didn't get the laces. It just spun off his foot. And it'll give Wilkes pretty good field position to start off their third drive of the game. Kick off out of bounds. Kicking team. Receiving team has elected to have them re-kick the ball. That's an intriguing decision, a re-kick. It might simply be because they trust their returners to uh, turn it into something. Jaquan Shields on the near side for Wilkes. As they're ready to, just about ready to kick it off. Schweitzer off is on the far side to receive. And this will go end over end. And picked up at the 22-yard line by Nate Whitaker. He'll get up the middle and turn this into a big return. Last man to beat, and he is wrestled down from behind by Kamal Stewart. A touchdown-saving tackle, but a good decision by the Colonel's coaching staff to have the re-kick. He'll get great field position. It'll be first and 10 from the 30. Down to 2.07 to go in the first quarter. A 14 to 8 Albright lead. And first drive. Built in a long touchdown drive. Second drive, they were pinned back on their own nine yard line, and first pass was intercepted. See what they can pull off here. To bar a QB. 
And Kamal Reed in the backfield with two receivers to the near side. Quarterback keepers, he'll try to cut to the inside. He'll get to the 20-yard line, trying to get outside, but he has tackled down another big tackle by Kamal Stewart. But it will be good enough for a first down for the Colonels. Gain of 13 on the play. It'll be first and 10 from the 17-yard line. We head to the late stages of this first quarter. Richard Aremis comes out. They'll add another receiver. And Carmine Azari. Again, Tabora in the shotgun, low snap, picks it up well. Looking to the corner now, looking for his options, rolls out under pressure, just tosses it high in the air. It's a 50-50 ball, and it's tipped and incomplete. Tabora throws off his back foot. Certainly would have been better served to just get rid of it, but he was hoping for an athletic play in the back of that end zone. I think the only receiver that was basically in vicinity was Jordan Jones, and he's not a receiver at all. He's tied in at 6'3", 205. So it'll be second and 10. From the 17 yard line. Play clock down to four. They're not even out of the huddle yet, so they may not even see it. Clock is down to zero. No, it's down to seven. Wait a second. I may have misread the clock. We we're actually unable to see the one digit, so I apologize for that. As now they'll call the timeout as it eventually goes down to double zeros. Timeout. Well, same result in spite of my faux pas. It'll be a timeout for Wilkes, their first charge timeout of the game. We'll take a quick break. Back in a moment, you're watching Albright College Football. Welcome back, everybody. Once again, we are live from Shirk Stadium in Reading. Late in the first quarter, 1.22 left to go. Wilkes marching, but Albright leads 14 to 8. It'll be second and 10 from the 17-yard line after the timeout for the Colonels. Deborah in the shotgun once again with only one receiver to the far side. And back to throw as everyone releases from the tight end. That's deflected and, oh, almost intercepted. As Trayvon Harris Dorman was the closest to it. It'll be third and ten. Like seeing the pressure put on here by Albright defensively. And they have given up their fair share of points in the first four games. They know it better than anybody. So a renewed vigor here from the Lions D. Trying to stall this Wilkes drive. It'll be third and ten from the 17-yard line. Back to throw, looking end zone. Over the middle, it is caught at the one. Big hit thrown, but that's good enough for a first down. Nice catch by uh, Nick Yannick. Jefferson with the tackle. That was the kind of hit where you want to try to jar the ball loose. Legally so. No targeting. So that's very well done. But it will be first and goal from the three-yard line as we're under a minute to go here in the first quarter. A lot of personnel changes here for Wilkes. As they'll set up in an eye formation. Hand it off to the dot of the eye. All the way back, spin move inside, and it's a touchdown for the Colonels. Not a long run, but certainly effective by Jeremiah Acker. And Albright ties the game up at 14. And they're going to try the gate play here, and maybe... Go for two, but look like Albright snuffed it out well. So Despirito will just go for the single point. 
Everything connects well. Goes to the right. No good. And we stay tied. So two missed PATs. We are tied. Even though it's early on, it may make a difference later on. 42 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Tied up at 14. And a good drive from Wilkes again. Smart decision to, after the kick went out of bounds, to have the re-kick instead of getting the ball at the, their own 45-yard line. They ended up returning it all the way to the 35 on the other side of the field. And again, a successful drive for the Wilkes Colonels. It was capped off by a Jeremiah Acker three-yard rush. Five-play drive of, of 30 yards. So it actually started from the 30-yard line at 35. And it lasted a minute 25. So it didn't take long. A relatively high-scoring game so far. And we are still just in the first quarter, 42.2 seconds on the clock. As Despirito will get ready to kick it away for the Colonels. Back deep is Chris Holbrook and Lucas Rosselli. Spinning kick, line drive, and that will go out of bounds. So let's see what Albright decides to do. Will they ask for the re-kick? Or will they accept it? They will re-kick after dropping it back five yards. And you may not think that five yards makes a difference, but it also allows a lot more room for the returners to kind of run onto it. And just look what Wilkes did in the, on their last drive. It was a difference of about 25, 30 yards. So let's see if Albright could pull off the same feat late here in the first quarter. And that is cardinal sins for these uh, kickoff men, both of these teams. Yeah, sure, you angle it towards a certain player, a preferred returner, but got to keep it in bounds. So Despirito tries it again. This one will stay in and gets it all the way back in outside the 10-yard line. And here comes Chris Holbrook. He's already taken one back, and he has a hole on the far side. Holbrook kind of stutter step his way through, but he has spun down hard at the 40-yard line. So uh, still a fine return. And with 30 seconds to go in the first quarter, it'll be first and 10 from their own 40-yard line. So two scores so far for Albright. One on the opening kickoff and then a good drive. So they should have some confidence here against a very good Wilkes team. 4-0 for the first time since 06. Two receivers near side, one to the far, one in the backfield, tied in in motion in Forbes. Fake the handoff. Hey, back to throw. Flushed out of the pocket as he rolls. Pass across, and it is complete at the 45-yard line. Zach Miller forced out of play at about that 45. Didn't really get any more after the catch. But it is a first down with 23 seconds to go in the quarter. And clock will stop so the sticks can move. And now it rolls. Maybe they'll throw one more play. Again, win not a factor, so they don't need to rush with the wind at their back. Because there is none. Six seconds to go in the quarter. Tied into the motion, Forbes goes back, and that'll do it. Now that is the one disadvantage of having the uh, scoreboard back behind you. Not sure exactly what the time was. If they wanted to run a play, they just, well, again, ran out of time. So a very exciting first quarter of action. We're tied at 14. We'll take a quick break back in a moment with the second as you're watching Albright College Football.
Welcome back, everybody. Once again, live from Shirk Stadium. About to start second quarter action. Tied up at 14. Not sure if you heard during the break. Now take a look at our Twitter feed. Already posted the, the uh, I believe it was the uh, touchdown catch. It's already been posted on Twitter. Gotta love social media. <laughs> so Wilkes will start things off. Actually, excuse me, Albright will start things off. Quarterback in trouble. He just throws it away. First couple options didn't quite work out. As LaHaye just smartly tossed it away. Pressure from the Colonel's Dane, Tarantelli. Right, give Tarantelli the pressure. There's no foul for intentional grounding. There was a receiver in the area. Yeah, there was a receiver about three yards away. It might have been completely uncatchable, but he was still inside the tackle box. So... Original flag thrown, picked up, second and 10 from the 45 yard line. LaHaye in the shotgun. Pass up ahead. It connects to Zayner. He's met at the 40 yard line. He may get credit to the 39, which makes for a very manageable third down situation. Jeer Woods in the tackle. First on the tackle. So pretty important third down play here. Of course, we've seen the Lions have the guts to go, go for it on fourth. And it doesn't need to be fourth and short either. But it is third and four from the 39-yard line. Trayvon Riffin, the lone receiver on the near side, trips to the far side. And this will be handed off. Nice cut to the outside. They get to the 30-yard line, so it's a first down and more for the Lions. Tony Thorpe just found the hole just outside the line. Able to cut the corner well. So first down for Albright. As they spot the ball on the 26-yard line, first and 10. 13-yard gain, forced out of bounds by Jason Hampton. Basically the same lineup. Thorpe in the backfield with trips to the right, one to the left. Play clock down to five. Snap, back to throw. Nice angle across, and it is caught as Bootman. Tries to circle up the middle, but he is met hard at the 20-yard line. Gets to the 19. Pass complete to Malik Bootman. So it'll be second down, second and three from that 19. As the Lions are in the red zone. They'll kind of reverse the field. With Ruffin, the far side receiver. With Bootman, Miller, and Zayner on the near side. And Thorpe in the backfield. He's in the block. Pass up ahead. Oh, incomplete. Pass was behind Bootman. Pass by Jimmy LaHaye. Incomplete. Third down. And uh, there in the vicinity was Zach Weber. If he realized that was anywhere near him, he could have picked himself an interception and maybe a pick six. So it will be third and three now from the 19-yard line. 12.40 to go here in the first half. Tied up at 14. They're turning this formation into kind of a bread and butter. Three receivers left, one to the right, one man in the backfield as LaHaye's back to throw. Looking to the corner of the end zone. It is caught, but forced out of bounds, incomplete. And it was a nice catch by Zayner, but this time just could not quite drag the toe down. And it'll be fourth and three. And there were a couple of colonels in on the coverage, forcing them out. And again, a decision to be made. I'm curious, again, I'll admit this is my first Albright game. I don't know if Dan Lewis is available, to be honest with you. It looks like they're going to go for it. Handoff up the middle, and he'll be short. 
He tried to stretch the last second, but maybe a half yard short. It looks like it will turn over on downs. No official signal just yet. But judging from our angle, I'm right next to the camera, and it will be a turnover on downs. Yeah, and I don't know what kind of leg uh, Lewis or Shelley has for Albright. So maybe that's just not in their range. But it will be pretty good field position, at least a turnover on downs for Wilkes. They've got... First down. Okay, I wanted to make sure everyone heard the announcement. Just the uh, clock kept on rolling. So it'll be first and ten for the Colonels. Yeah, I'm a little curious on why they didn't go for the field goal there. Yeah, and certainly when points are presented to you, you want to take them every single time. So we stay tied up at 14, 12.28 to go. In the second half, this is handed off. Blockers ahead. Uh, contact made by uh, Daniel Vital. Gain of three on the play. It'll be second and seven from the twenty-yard line. Kamal Reed on the carry. Daniel Vital. As Wilkes University, they're starting to spread things out. Kamal Reed, the backup running back behind Jeremiah Acker. Second and seven. But Wilkes is the kind of club they seem to like to throw the ball. But they will have Reed in the backfield once again. Tabora in the shotgun. And he will hand it off. Nope, he's going to keep it. And he's going to be forced to roll out. Pass up ahead is through the hands of the receiver. And Wilkes finds themselves very fortunate that that did not go the other way. So it will be third and seven now. Then right, right through the hands of Derek Nelson, the senior. Wilkes brings back Acker. Nelson in motion. Back to throw. They look to the near side. A little bit of a stutter step and caught. The pass was just a little bit behind. Pass complete to Jordan Jones. But Jordan Jones adjusted well. And it looks like we'll have a flag here against Wilkes. Preliminary call is a hold. Third play, personal foul. Hands to the face, 75 on the offense. 15-yard penalty, third down. Well, I saw the hands come together, thought it was a hold, but personal foul, that's even better news for Albright. 11.33 to go in the second quarter. Tied up at 14. So instead of a first down for the Colonels, it'll be third and long. As they're forced all the way back to their 10-yard line, they need to get to about the 32. So. But usually not a problem for Wilkes. They like to spread it out. They'll keep Reed in the backfield. Most likely in the block, Tabora from the shotgun. Two receivers on either side, spread out sideline to sideline. So D-backs and safeties will be tested as the play clock goes down to two. And a timeout called, but it was the officials that got together. Play clock may not have actually reset to the officials' liking. Please set the game clock to 11.33. Let's clock to 25. Let's we'll start on my signal. So that's a break there for Wilkes. A good job by the back judge to recognize that. Clock will roll. Shouldn't be a problem with the play clock this time. Same formation. Tabora brings it down. Gets through the line, being chased from behind, and he is tackled at the 18-yard line. The line collapsed basically right up the middle. As Foster will get credit for the tackle. And Tabora 
could only get to about the 18. It'll be fourth and nine as Wilkes will look to punt. Despirito ready to punt. Back to receive at the 40-yard line. His own 40-yard line is Kevin Zayner. Very young squad here, the Lions. I'm looking down and seeing a lot of SOs, sophomores, juniors as well. Spiral kick to the 45, and he'll take it up ahead. Nice cut. Now he'll go to the near side. Gets to the 50, 45. Has the sideline. Tries to jump his way through. He is tackled down at the 32-yard line. And Albright will get great field possession to start off this drive, first and 10. Again, from about the 33. A great job by the Albright defense. Helped out by a penalty, but sometimes the defense forces your hand as far as those penalties are concerned. Maybe a little frustration coming from Wilkes. Again, 4-0, not saying they've had it easy, but maybe looking at the records, expected more, and maybe under a little bit of pressure here. This is handed off to Dogba up the middle as he'll get to the 30-yard line, gain of three on the play. Moyer on the tackle for the Colonels. And you'll take those three, four-yard gains every single time. As Dogba stays in as the running back. Forbes a tight end. Zayner on the near side. As Forbes is in motion, then it's pitched out to Dogba. Dogba trying to get around the edge. He gets to the 25, falls forward, and may have the first down. But looking at the spot... Maybe about a half a yard short. Let's take a look. They will spot the ball on the 24-yard line. Needs to get to the 23, so third and one. With LaHaye in the quarterback, even though he goes from the shotgun, it's 6'3", 220. He should be able to pick up the yard with some help from his line. But they will spread it out again with Dogba in the backfield. Receivers in the near side. Two to the near side, one to the far. They give him the shotgun to LaHaye. Tight end in motion. As he's handed off up the middle. He'll get the first down. Will Dogba. Well, looking at the both line judges, that's not as far as I thought they would have gotten. But the referee has already called the first down. I thought he got to about the 21 on the initial push. Looks like the 22, but it's good enough. One yard gain. Now it is the 23, excuse me, but either way. First and 10. This clock rolls down to 840 to go in the second second quarter. Oh, forced out of the pocket and getting sacked is LaHaye. Great pressure put on as Pat Ritchie just got a great push off the line 5'11", 235 for the junior and the first sack of the day loss of 8 on the play it'll be 2nd and 18 from back in the 31 yard line but right now if you're alright, no panic you've been able to pick up big yards against this Colonel's defense and seemingly, at least from what I've seen in this game Everything is four-down territory. Slay so Hay has uh, Dogba in the backfield. Hand off to Dogba. Looking for a hole up the middle. Finds one. Tries to jump his way through. And he'll get to about the 26-yard line. Able to get it up ahead. They'll give credit to the 20, well, 26, 27. Still third and long. Need to get to about, to be sure, the 13-yard line. So it'll be third and 14. We're down to 7.15 to go in the second quarter. They spread it out now with four receivers. They bring in Lucas Roselli on the far side. LaHaye, low snap, back to throw. Angle pass up ahead, caught at the 21-yard line. Need some forward momentum, but they can't do it. Good. Defense by the two DBs, knocking Zayner down. Zach Neshi 
That was Zach Neshiwat in on the tackle, along with Gabe Algier. So judging from what we've seen so far in this game, this is certainly going to be an attempt for the first down. Fourth and five from the 18-yard line. So now four receivers, two on either side. Back to throw, looking left. Out of the backfield, caught at the 12-yard line, may have gotten it, and he did. First down, Albright. Will Dogba comes out of the backfield, around the left side, and gets the first down. First and 10 from the 12. Gain of six on the play. This drive continues to roll. 6.05 to go in the quarter. They fake the handoff, low throw, incomplete. And that might have been a good thing. Simply because Zach Miller was absolutely covered. Zach Weber was the man covering. If he tries to float that in there, Weber probably picks it up on an interception. So instead, second and 10 from the 12. 6.01 to go in the quarter. Tied up at 14. As this drive continues to move, slowly but surely, eating up a lot of clock. LaHaye fakes the handoff, tossed towards the end zone, touchdown! touchdown Complete to Kevin Zaner, who just came across the slant. And Albright retakes the lead. The initial handoff fake to Dogba seemed to freeze a couple of the defenders. And Zaner just found the seam. And a brilliant pass by LaHaye makes it 20 to 14 pending the PAT. As Dan Lewis will come in and take it. Missed his first opportunity. That was after the kickoff return to start off the game. Snap and holder good, and so is the kick. 5.57 to go in the first half. And the Albright Lions take a 21-14 lead. Now, you've got to be very, very happy with that drive. If you're John Marska, 13th year head coach here at Albright. That is some fantastic work. Driving all the way down in four minutes and 32 seconds, a nine play drive of 33 yards. So it wasn't a long field, but they certainly ate enough clock. Again, the LaHaye pass to Zaner. They called it 12 yards. And the kick by Daniel Lewis was good, of course. I'd like to see uh, Albright pick up a stop here. Try to build some total momentum in this game. As Todd Shelley's ready to kick it off. And the deepest man back for Wilkes is Nate Whitaker, right in the middle, wearing number four. Jaquan Shields is on the far side. And this will be a shorter kick. So this will allow Whitaker to jump onto it. Almost goes down to a knee at the 20 and has a big hole up the middle. Tries to jump his way through to the 40-yard line. Secures the ball as he almost lost it on the tackle from Chris Holbrook. But uh, some pretty good field position for the Colonels. It'll be first and 10 from their own 42-yard line. 5.15 left to go here in the second quarter. Now it has been a back and forth affair. Again, Albright had a 6 0 lead 15 seconds in. Wilkes took an 8 6 lead. We were just tied at 14, then the touchdown from Albright. So here we go. Now, two in the backfield. Both Acker and Reed are in 
on either side of Tabora in the shotgun. Two receivers, one on either side as well. Tabora back to throw. Tosses near side. Nice catch and end around to get to the 50-yard line. And he'll power forward to the 48, may get the first down right away. Out of a screen play to Abu Bakar Fofana. And it will be a first down, gain of exactly 10. So it'll be first and 10 now from the 48 yard line. Now just one wide receiver. And one in the backfield. Handed off. And straight up the middle goes Jeremiah Acker. And he'll get a gain of seven on the play to the 41. Sam Vieira able to pick up the tackle. Third and three. The clock rolls down to the five minute mark here in the second quarter. The Wilkes trying to take this short field and tie this game up. They've been able to march so far. And second and relatively short here as they'll spread it out with two receivers far side and Acker in the backfield. They hand it off to Acker as he is met at the 30, the 41 yard line and driven backwards on his back. There were two, maybe three Albright Lions in on that tackle along with Tyler Foster. They gave him the 41. I didn't think he got that far to be honest with you, but it will be third and three. So a chance for a stop for all the for the Albright defense. Two receivers to the far side. Taboro deep in the shotgun this time. Yannick and Nelson to the far side. Actually, this is Nelson in uh, motion. They fake the handoff to him. There's a slant, doesn't see it. Got to get containment. He'll cut to the outside, get the first down to the 35, stumbles out, and then hit late. Oh, a bad hit there. Bad decision by Sam Vieira. Just could not hold up. So we'll add 15 to this. Okay, I don't think it was done with any real malice, just a poor timing. Not only in the space of the game. Personal foul, lays it out of bounds, number six on a defense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic first down. Yeah, that is a tough break because he didn't hit him all that hard, but it doesn't matter. Had him off balance and certainly lurked worse than what it was, but doesn't you don't call the Result of the hit, you just call the hit. So Wilkes, first and 10 from the 17 as they enter the red zone. They'll bunch it up to the left side, one receiver on the near. That's Ermaeus. A lot of motion on the line, and flag flies. Actually, it's calmly dropped. You want to be accurate, but well, let's see what the call is. It looks like it's going to be encroachment against Albright. They'll spot the ball on the 12. Here's the call. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, number 48. Third down. Well, he says third, but it's first. Correct, the first down. There you go. First and five from the 12-yard line. So Wilkes was marching, now help from a couple of uh, penalties. This is handed off to Acker. Cuts to the outside to the 10, looking for the 5, but he has wrestled hard out of bounds. Kyle Komenitsky, the Point Pleasant, New Jersey native, forces him out of bounds. But it will be second and one. Maybe not even from the 8-yard line. Looking at the sticks, needs to get about midway between the, the uh, 7 and 8. Would be shocked to see a pop to the end zone here. Just one receiver out there, though, in Hermaeus. It's going to be handed off. Nice tackle on the far side. Got to hang on to him, though. As Trayvon Harris Dorman with the tackle. And they gave him forward momentum 
to the eight yard line. Well, maybe move them back a little. It's still gonna be third and very short. As Kelvin Gonzalez gets his first action of the game on that run. I'd certainly expect the Colonels to go their version of heavy jumbo right now, just getting as much big guys in there as possible, push forward, get that half yard to reset the downs and set up first and goal. Two in the backfield as now Whit as Acker gets away. The man in the backfield is Lasinski, and a timeout is called. I think it was actually called up by Albright. Looks like the clock was down to zero, so see if we get the call on who called the timeout. No matter who it is, it's their second of the game. Officials are getting together. The one point I saw was in Albright's direction. <laughs> but the referee wants to make an announcement here. Let's see. Still talking to his uh, fellow officials. Timeout. Albright, second of the half. That is Albright's timeout. We'll take it as well. 2.18 to go in the first half as the Lions clinging to a 28-14 lead. Well, we have the time. If you want to participate in the halftime lacrosse shootout, make your way downstairs to the center gate. It's two shots for $5. You win yourself a T-shirt courtesy. Well, halftime lacrosse shootout sounds fun. Lacrosse. But we're enjoying a great football game up here in the booth. Timeout over. Albright calls their second of the game. Of course, second of the game, second of the half. No matter how you call it. Third and short for the Wilkes Colonels. As they are threatening the end zone. Tabora brings it down himself, trying to find his way through, then slings it to the end zone. Touchdown. He was under pressure, but he found Nick Yannick. A sidearm pass to the end zone. As Wilkes has pulled within one, pending the PAT. Great heads-up pass by Jose Tabara. Yeah, and he was harassed from behind. I even believe the pursuer had a hand on him. As they'll look at the gate, but certainly will not continue, and they'll go for the extra point and try to tie the game up. Every time I see that look from a offense looking for a PAT, they always come back to the line. But a lot of teams try it. Here's the end over end, spinning, and it is good. 2.13 left to go. Here in the first half, the Wilkes Colonels have tied the game up at 21. High scoring contest, pretty much what we expected. But Alvernia staying with the 4-0 uh, Wilkes Colonels. Play for play, touchdown for touchdown. But certainly has not been boring. Essentially from the jump, we've had great action. By the way, at the half, don't go anywhere. We'll keep the mics live so you can listen along to what's happening on the field. But we'll also have uh, halftime stats. And we'll go through the scoring summary. So far, we'll have a lot of work to do. Where the six touchdowns score between the two squads. With 2.13 left, the bad news for Albright is they only have one timeout remaining. The good news is they've been able to return the ball quite well. So we'll see if either Holbrook or Rosselli will get a good push. Rosselli near side, Holbrook far side. And then you have Will Dogba short along with Trayvon Harris Dorman. So they're certainly capable of breaking as well. Alexander Despirito ready to kick off for the Colonels. Far side, driving him back. And coming out is Holbrook. Holbrook's already been able to break one. Gets through one tackle and has a big hold on the near side of the 30. Has some blockers as well. Gets to the 50-yard line to the 40. 35-30 flag flies, and he goes to the end zone. It is a touchdown, but we have to wait for the flag. Oh, no. And another flag late. As it looks like Holbrook took his helmet off. Oh. So we'll listen along to the official. Again, that touchdown is 
I'm 99% sure that's going to be called back as there were three blockers for Albright at the near side sideline. And it may even have been, it may have been a hold, may have been a block from behind, may have been both. The second flag will be pretty well inconsequential for unsportsmanlike conduct, the Emmett Smith rule, taking off the helmet after a touchdown. Officials are talking it over. The best news that could be for Albright is they pick up the first flag. As here comes the call. Well, not quite. They're going to talk it over. And it certainly is going to be against Albright. And they might be gonna, maybe going to touch. Oh, the coaching staff for, for Wilkes not happy. They may be calling this a touchdown. And another flag flies. Well, no official call, but certainly judging by the body language, that first flag is being picked up. Oh, what a turn of events here. The Wilkes coaching staff not pleased. And hopefully we get an announcement here, but it does look like it's going to be another touchdown for the Albright Lions. Officials are still talking it over. They put six points up on the board as well they should because there's still been no explanation on the anything so far. Here we go. Go to play as a touchdown. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct over 22 on his defense for removing his helmet. Unsportsmanlike conduct, head coach Wilkes, those three yard penalties will offset. We will try for point. Well, no explanation on the original on the original flag, which is surprising. Usually you would get an explanation that there was no this, no that. But they don't ex explain, and this is a huge break for Albright because not only do they get the touchdown, but the frustration of the Wilkes coach negates the unsportsmanlike conduct of Chris Holbrook taking off his helmet. What a turnaround here. It's 27-21. Here comes the PAT from Lewis. Line drive is through and good. 157 to go in the first half of play. And the Albright Lions, with some controversy, take a 28 to 21 lead. I would love to have been in that huddle to know what the officials were talking about as far as the first flag thrown as Holbrook was going into the end zone. And now if you're Albright, you take this, in my opinion, perceived break and run with it, so to speak. If you're Wilkes, you've got to find a way to forget about it. Can't let it frustrate you. As the Colonels still have two timeouts left. So there is a decent amount of time. They are a very good passing team. Under two minutes left, so they can get a good return, which they've been able to do pretty well every time they've received a kickoff and then run a two-minute drill. They can get right back into this one, trailing by seven. It's Todd Shelley ready to kick off. And again, three receivers back for the Colonels, including Nate Whitaker, Jaquan Shields. Shields is on the far side. As this will go to the near side, and they may let it roll out of play, and it does. That's a heads-up play there from Jason Schweitzeroff. And we'll see what the Colonels decide to do. So they will re-kick. And every time we've seen this, this is now the second time that Albright has kicked out of bounds. Wilkes did it once. It's turned into big returns. 
So now if you're Albright right now, you've got to recognize, okay, let's not let that happen again. Make sure you are solid on your marks and on your on your blockers. So they'll kick off from the 30-yard line instead of the 35. Now, I understand directing it to Schweitzer off. If you want to direct it to somebody you don't think is going to break it, got to keep it in bounds. So Todd Shelley will try again. Shorter kick. This will be picked up at the 26-yard line. But running right into the blockers is Nate Whitaker, and he is thrown backwards. They'll give him forward progress to the 40-yard line. Still a relatively short field for the Colonels to work. 149 left to go in the third, in the second quarter, rather. We really don't want to jump ahead of ourselves. This has been a very entertaining game, high scoring, high action, a little bit of controversy. It'll be first and 10 from the 40 for Wilkes. Again, they have two timeouts remaining. And a pretty potent passing attack as Tabora will come out from the shotgun. Acker in the backfield is the running back. Yannick and Nelson on the far side as the receivers. Back to throw. Long pass over the middle. It's intercepted! Intercepted by the... And he'll go all the way down to the 20-yard line to the 15. Kamal Stewart just picks it off right at the middle. And now, late in this second quarter, Albright with an opportunity to go up by two scores. I'm guessing the QB never saw Kamal Stewart. There were actually a couple of Albright players who were right there who could have picked up that interception. It'll be first and 10 from the 17-yard line. Short field, so the one timeout may not make a difference. Don't have to hurry incredibly. As Thorpe is in the backfield, LaHaye in the shotgun. As it'll hand it off to Thorpe, just trying to cut around the end. Gets to the 10-yard line, cuts to the middle, to the 6, and he is down. A solid gain there. They will stop the clock, and it'll be a first down for the Lions. First and goal. We'll hit the clock rolling down to 122 and counting. This is where you don't mind taking your time. Certainly, you take the points when you can get them, but you want to score with no time left if you can help it. Lay again with Thorpe in the backfield. Back to throw. Looking to the far side corner, and it is juggled. And waiting for the signal, incomplete. The juggle was it. If he catches that initially, that's a touchdown. But Ruffin just couldn't quite bring it in clean. One minute left to go. Second and goal from the six. Clock not rolling now, but the play clock is. So you don't want to waste the time out here. Four seconds to get the play off. Got to hurry. Eight seconds. Again, I can't see the first digit. I'm sorry about that, guys. As back to throw in is LaHaye. Swings it out to the outside to the 10, burying his head forward is Bootman. He'll get essentially to the line of scrimmage. Clock continues to roll. 45 seconds left. So Bootman, no gain. Third and goal from the six. Bootman now in the backfield. Quarterback back to throw to the near side. Caught at the one. Trying to bury his head forward against three defenders. He's tackled down. It'll be fourth down. Clock will roll, then stop at 22 seconds left as the timeout is called. Fine catch from Kevin Zayner. Timeout, all right. This is their final timeout. And do you put points up on the board via the field goal, or do you go for the touchdown? Albright has shown 
the propensity to go for it. It's the ball is nestled outside the two yard line, so about a yard and a half to gain to get the touchdown. But they're basically being handed points here. And not only again would it be a 10 point game, that's two scores. And considering the way that Wilkes can drive the ball, guilty of a couple of interceptions in this one. I think you want to take the points if you can. Trying to find Dan Lewis out there or Todd Shelley. But it does look like they're going to go. They call it the one yard line. It's outside the one, so you can say a long one. Either way, it's LaHaye from the shotgun, but they bunch it up with two receivers to the left. They can't call a timeout to regroup here. This has got to be good enough. As a look at the sweep to the right, it's going to be handed off. Buries his head. Touchdown! Tony Thorpe, Tony Thorpe oh, the absorbs the contact right at the line of scrimmage, but powers his way through. And Albright. A two-score lead, it's 34-21. That was gutsy. As Albright will go into the locker room leading by at least 13, if not 14, as Lewis is in for the PAT. Shelley will hold. Shelley's also the backup QB. But I don't think we're going to see any trickery here. Good snap, good hold, but it's blocked. Picked up by Shelley, trying to get his hands free to throw it, but he wouldn't have nobody to throw to anyway. But it is going to be a two-score lead with 19 seconds left in the half. It's 34-21. A huge first half for the Albright Lions. Trying to pick up their first win of the season against an undefeated team. But Albright has all but thrown out the records. They have had a fantastic performance. A couple of mistakes here and there, always coachable moments. But a couple of uh, turnovers in their favor on interceptions. And they've been able to score some big touchdowns. Chris Holbrook returning two kickoffs. The first one for 98, and the last one at the 157 mark for 93. Now you want to keep this inbounds, certainly, as deep as possible, as Shelley is ready to let it fly. Picked up by Whitaker at his own 15-yard line. Need to contain, and they can't as Whitaker is gone to the outside. Just the kicker to beat. He stiff arms him to the outside. 20-10, touchdown, Wilkes. Huge hole on the far side. And with seven and a half seconds to go, the Wilkes Colonels. Give Albright a dose of their own medicine with a kickoff return. Nate Whitaker, 85 yards. As now Wilkes will try to pull within six. Despirito. Ready for the PAT. Kick is up, and it is good. So what a turnaround in just a few seconds. Albright was all set to go into the locker room up by two scores. Now Wilkes can take that kickoff return and turn it into some momentum. It'll be up to Albright. to talk it over in the locker room. Special teams being an issue, good and bad, on both sides of the ball. Three kickoff returns. 
One for Wilkes, as you just saw. Whitaker for 85 yards. And then Holbrook has two. So I would imagine, and now I certainly understand why these kickers have kicked the ball out of bounds a few times. If I'm Wilkes here, i got to find somebody to kick it off to. That's not going to take it to the house. Chris Holbrook on the far side to receive. Near side, Lucas Rosselli. They've been kicking it to Holbrook. And again, he's taken two back. I would imagine they try Rosselli this time. So they're both set up outside the 10-yard line. Short kick to the near side. And it's juggled. Got to pick that one up. Oh, big collision. With four seconds left, Yamir Lowry. He saw that, and you know what? He saw some daylight at the sideline, but got to catch the ball before you can run. And he's not someone who often is able to uh, pick up a kickoff return. Got a little bit of help, though, from Zach Miller to make sure he secured that. It'll be four seconds left. Well, some good news there is there's the offside. So they'll add five yards. Only going to get one play off unless they go quick and short. They do have a timeout remaining. So if they can quickly get a play off, call a timeout, and then heave to the end zone, or does Albright go conservative here? And Wilkes will receive to start off the second half. And it does look like they're going to go into a kneel formation. Yeah, and I wouldn't have been surprised either way. Just Albright has been so aggressive in this game. All those fourth down conversions. But they will take a knee, and that'll do it for a very exciting first half of play. Albright goes into the locker room, leading 34-28. to We'll take a break and come back with a bit of a halftime show. And third quarter action in just a few minutes. Thanks so much for joining us. You're watching Albright College Football.
Welcome back, everybody. Once again, we're live from Shirk Stadium in Reading, Pennsylvania. We're at halftime. 34-28 lead for Albright as they lead Wilkes. Tom Williams here. Thanks so much for joining us as we go through the first half recap. Hang on, everybody. It's going to take a while as we had a lot of scoring. It started off right away. A Chris Holbrook 91-yard kickoff return to make it 6 nothing in favor of Albright as the extra point missed. And Wilkes picked up the ball and drove the ball down and finished off with a Tabara pass to Nick Yannick for 12 yards. And they went for two and got it. So with 9.56 left in the first, it was 8-6. to six. Jimmy LaHaye got the Lions back on the board with a six-yard pass to Kevin Zayner. They picked up the two-point conversion as LaHaye passed it to Zach Miller to make it a 12-8 game with 2.16 to go in the first. But then with 42 seconds left, Wilkes tied it up. Jeremiah Acker with a three-yard touchdown run. The extra point was no good. Again, tying the game up at 14. Well, not to be outdone, the second, ha the second quarter was uh, just as thrilling as Albright punched right back to make a 20-14 lead of 5.57 to go in the second quarter as LaHaye competed a 12-yard touchdown pass to Kevin Zayner. The extra point was good. Again, 20-14. Actually, 21 to 14, excuse me. But then Wilkes fought right back themselves. Jose Tabora, a eight yard pass to Nick Yannick. The kick was good to tie the game up at 21. For the second time in the game at the 157 mark, Chris Holbrook returned the kickoff for a touchdown. This time it was 93 yards. The extra point was good at 28 to 21. And then all right, added to the lead, 19 seconds left to go in the half. Tony Thorpe for one yard. The extra point attempt was blocked to make it 34-21. But seven seconds left, the ensuing kickoff. Nate Whitaker takes it 85 yards for the touchdown as Wilkes pulled within a score. Their extra point was good. 34-28 is where we stand here at the half. Taking a look at some of the stats for Wilkes leading the way rushing was Jose Tabora. He went 40 yards on six attempts. Acker has the lone rushing touchdown for Wilkes. Passing-wise, Tabora went 7 for 12, but with two interceptions, two touchdowns, and 67 yards, his long being 14 yards. Receiving wise, leading the way for the Colonels, Nick Yannick. Four catches, two of them for touchdowns. And a total of 37 yards, as long being 14. For Albright, leading the way on the ground, Tony Thorpe, 45 yards, one touchdown on eight carries. Dogba right behind him with 23 yards on seven carries. Jimmy LaHaye, 13 of 20, no interceptions, two touchdowns, 148 yards. He was sacked once, and his longest pass was for 42. While receiving-wise, Kevin Zayner. Six catches, 80 yards, two for touchdowns, one for 42 yards. Zach Miller right behind him at 55 yards on four catches, his long of 20 yards. So right now the big story is the back-and-forth aspect of this game and the two turnovers by Wilkes certainly making a huge difference. Special teams was kind of back-and-forth. Not only did we have the three kickoff returns, we also had three kickoffs that were kicked out of bounds that led to re-kicks and then great returns right after. So certainly something that is talked about in the locker room right now as we are still at the half. 28, to, actually 34 to 28 is the lead for Albright over Wilkes. We'll remind everyone that coming up next week for Wilkes is the return to Schmidt Stadium. They'll host Delaware Valley next Saturday afternoon at 1 for Albright. They'll head down to suburban Baltimore to battle the Mustangs of Stevenson University before returning back home to Shirk Stadium on the 26th for the 69th annual Roger Shrine Pretzel Bowl here against Widener. So we'll take a quick break. We'll be back for second half action in about 10 minutes or so. Again, our score, Albright 34, Wilkes 28, heading to the third quarter. We'll be back. You're watching Albright College Football.
50 50 tickets we'll have it for you in a moment if you are the winner you'll want to meet the cheerleaders coach down there right about where the team is coming out right now down there toward the scoreboard where the cheerleaders are okay if you have your ticket here is the winning number red ticket seven four one three three nine seven four one three three nine you want to take your ticket down there where the cheerleaders are and claim your prize Tiffany. Welcome back, everybody. Once again, live from Shirk Stadium in Reading. About to start second half action. Albright carrying a 34-28 lead. Was that close to going to the locker room up by two scores, but Wilkes took a kickoff the other way for 85 yards, very late. And the bad news for Albright is Wilkes is going to receive as well, so they have a chance to pull even, if not take a lead with the uh, six point difference. Tom Wilms, thanks so much for joining us. Just about ready to get rolling. Just a back and forth, high octane game. As mentioned during the halftime show, we had, we've had uh, three kickoffs returned for touchdowns. We've had two point conversions. We've had just about everything in this. What are we gonna do for this last uh, 30 minutes of play? Well. Stay tuned, you're about to find out as Albright again will kick off. As Todd Shelley will try to send it deep and keep it in bounds, by the way, as he's kicked it out of bounds twice. And uh, both turned into long returns, the one being the 85 return that essentially closed the first half of play. It'll be interesting to see how both teams change things up, shore things up. There are now still three back to receive for Wilkes back at their 15-yard line. This is Todd Shelley, ready to kick it off from the 35-yard line, far side hash. And over and but swinging, spinning to the far side, gets it over the head, and he's going to try to let it go out of bounds. No, it stops at the goal line, and very fortunate that it went to over the goal line, as that was awfully close. Just imagine if he had to play that out. He had no momentum going forward. What kind of a heady play by Jason Schweitzeroff. So they bring it out to the 25 yard line. It's Jose Tabara, the senior. Will start up the offense for the Colonels. One man in the backfield, and that's Kamal Reed. He's the third choice at running back. Two receivers near side, one to the far. So now the half is underway and he runs right into the line. Tries to get to the outside, but he is Tackled down by Sam Vieira. So that'll be a loss of about one and a half. It'll be a second down as the Colonels, at least on one play, going the wrong direction. 
It'll be second and 11 from the 24. They fake the handoff to Reed. Roll out. Toss up ahead. Juggled and, ooh, almost intercepted. Getting in the way of that was Chris Holbrook. Pass was intended for Richard Ormias. And it'll be third and 11. And Albright trying to step up defensively. Get a big stop to start off this second half of play. But some wide receivers brought into the game, including number seven, Derek Nelson, to the far side, along with Nick Yannick. They'll spread it out with three to that far side, five in total. All alone in the shotgun, Tabora. Low snap, picks it up, looking over the middle. Now tosses far side, has a man. It hangs in the air, and it's caught. Nice catch by Nick Yannick as he came back forward against Kamal Stewart. He gets to the 47-yard line. It'll be a first down for the Colonels. That's a tough break for the Lions D. Did all they could to force a three and out. Instead, a new set of downs for Wilkes after that 23 yard pass. Armin Jefferson finishes off the tackle. Now just three receivers and a man in the backfield. Fake the handoff, and that is dropped. Pass by Tabor was right into the shoulder of Nick Yannick and just couldn't quite bring it in. It'll be second and 10. Thirteen thirty-nine left to go in the third quarter. And a nice fall day here in Reading. A little threat of rain never actually happened, it seemed. And second and 10 from the 47. Tabora hands it off to Acker. Acker up the middle. He'll get over the center stripe to about the 44-yard line, about a yard shy of the first down. And Acker just 5'8", but a solid 215. Does a great job churning his legs to get to that at a 44. It'll be third and one. A very makeable third down. This is handed off and met in the backfield. Oh, makeable, but they don't. As he has stopped at the 45-yard line. Kamal Reed on the carry. Jam Kamal Reed just couldn't find a hole. Kamal Stewart and so this will be interesting to see what the Colonels do. I know that uh, Albright... Pretty much the entire game has had the guts to go for it on every single fourth down. This will be fourth and two after that loss of one. Tabora stays in. The chant of defense comes up here at Shirk Stadium. Tabora back to throw. Under pressure, tosses it up, and it is caught. Coming across is Nelson, and he'll go in for the touchdown. He wasn't even the intended receiver. Looked like it was intended for Yannick, who was held up. But a great job by Nelson to come across, essentially pick it off, and take it to the house. So Wilkes has tied the game up at 34, pending the PAT. As Nelson, the holder, will bring everybody in. And Justin Pollock will kick the extra point for the Colonels. It is up, and it is good. So with that extra point, Wilkes has taken a 35-34 to 34 lead. So relatively early on in this second half. A 45-yard touchdown pass from Tabora to Nelson. And... I wouldn't say came out of nowhere, but just who the receiver was came out of nowhere. Seven play drive of 75 yards, lasting two minutes and 45 seconds. As Pollock actually 
his third attempt. So it hasn't been Despirito kicking. It's been Pollock. So my apologies there. But the bottom line is Wilkes has a one-point lead. And we'll see if Albright can respond again. They were up by two scores late in the second quarter. Gave up a touchdown on a kickoff return, and now that drive early here in the third. Wilkes, of course, looking for the stop to try to get some momentum themselves. But first trick is going to be to avoid the long returns. Chris Holbrook has already returned two for touchdowns. Lucas Rosselli is the other returner. They're both back on the five-yard five yard line. Rosselli is on the far side from the press box. It's Despirito. Oh, a little trickery. This is picked up at the 40-yard line to the outside. Goes Jason Smith, and he'll get it to the 45. Not really. I wouldn't call that an onside kick. Just trying to find a hole and maybe force a drop by Smith. But a good job by him to just settle it down. A relatively short field for Albright to work with. It'll be first and 10 from their own 45-yard line. Here comes Jimmy LaHaye. With Tony Thorpe in the backfield, two receivers near, three in total. Forbes in motion. Ball handed off and met in the backfield is Thorpe. He'll go backwards, maybe a yard. That was some good push from the line. As it was Dane Tarantelli who gets credit for the tackle. It'll be second and 11 from the 44. Looks like they're starting to jump the snap. And it's timed perfectly to, talk, to tap down Thorpe. He gets a yard, so basically the original line of scrimmage will be third and 10 from the 45. Third down. Tackle made by Cole Jesmer. And a big third down here for Albright. They want to try to keep up at least the offensive momentum. They haven't been shy about going for it on fourth down this entire game. They want to have to do it every single drive, though. Third and 10. Delayed handoff up the middle, and there's a lot of room. Cut to the middle. It's a first down and more to the 40-yard line, stumbling to the 35 and forced out of bounds. It's Tony Thorpe. I don't really like what I saw from LaHaye there. And he does that clap to uh, signify the snap, but it did start to look like Wilkes was jumping that, just like the old school huts that quarterbacks have done. Got to change up the tempo and the rhythm a little bit. You just don't want them to be able to get a good hold of the snap count. Gain of 21 on the play. First and 10. This is handed off to the outside. Malik Bootman. He'll get a couple, if not three. Looks like the 29-yard line, so second and seven. As Dogba comes back out of the game, he was in as a blocking back. Thorpe is back in. And Malik Book Bootman is now set up as a receiver on the near side, along with Kevin Zayner. Two receivers far side as well. Low snap, but picked up well. Pass over is caught by Zayner, but he is met right away and tackled down. He'll get to the 26. He'll be about two yards shy of the first down. As in on the tackle for the Wilkes Colonels is Zach Neshawite. So 
So it'll be third and two from the 26. Again, if other plays have been four down territory, this might be as well for the Lions. It's Thorpe in the shotgun. Actually, Thorpe gets it from the shotgun. It's the first down as he cuts to the outside. And he'll make it to just shy of the 20-yard line. First down, Lions. LaHaye and Thorpe have been combining very well. Not only the uh, direct handoffs, but the delayed. Some misdirection in there as well. They're really changing it up well. And they are marching here on the Colonels. It'll be first and 10 from the 21-yard line. Holbrook and Zane are the near side receivers. As again, Thorpe is in the backfield. Back to throw, looking to the near side corner for Zayner, and it's over his head, incomplete. No chance to pick that one up. As that was intended for, actually the, on the coverage was Neshawat. It'll be second and 10 from the 21. Down to 8.24 to go in the third quarter. And Wilkes was able to march down very quickly to start off the start off the half. They lead by one. Albright trying to respond. Three receivers to the near side with Thorpe in the backfield. Fake the handoff to Thorpe. Out in the flat and it's caught. 20-yard line cut to the outside of the 15. Gets forward to about the 13. But some positive yardage there to uh, Zach Miller. It'll be a second down as they give him credit to the 13-yard line. Second and two. We need to get to the 11. Uh, they're going to regroup here. It is third down. We said second. The, everything else says second, but it should be third. You have the incompletion and then that play. It's third down. Here's some of the fans uh, rooting for uh, Wilkes, begging for them to change it, and they do. Trips to the left, and Zane to the near side. Low snap, pass up ahead. Oh, that is incomplete, almost intercepted. That pass was intended for Miller. But Zach Weber was there, and that was pretty much into his hands. He wouldn't have gotten anywhere, but it wouldn't have been a turnover. Instead, fourth and two. And Albright down by just one. And it's pretty obvious they're going to go for it here. Big fourth down play. And Albright has not been shy on these. One of the backfield trips to the left. And fake the hand up, but under pressure, pass over the middle, and it is caught, touchdown! Into triple coverage, the catch made by Kevin Zayner. Just found a hole, and he was under duress right away, getting hit hard, but found a way to bring it in and hang on. So Albright takes a 40 to 35 lead, pending the PAT or two points, most likely. I'm actually pretty confident they're going for two to try to make it a seven point lead. I wouldn't be shocked to see the same exact play. But they also have Thorpe in the backfield. Tied in in motion. They'll pass it. And it is dropped. Oh, Zach Miller. Had his hands on it, and while he brought it in, it fell to the ground. So with 7.38 to go in the third quarter, Albright takes a 40-35 to 35 lead. It might be the team that gets that either the last touchdown or last stop that wins this game. Very reminiscent of arena football. It's going to be high scoring. Two potent offenses. And right now, the defenses have had some trouble stopping. 
So Albright will get ready to kick off in this back and forth game. Leading 40 to 35. Todd Shelley will try to kick it deep. Again, three returners back for the Colonels. Outside the 14, the 15 yard line. Anthony Washington, I believe, is now the returner in the middle. If I'm reading that number correctly. Schweitzerhoff is on the far side. They've been going to him for the most part, but it goes out of bounds. This is something they can't afford. Last two times they kicked it out of bounds. One went for a long return. The other went for a touchdown. So they'll move it back five yards. And I can imagine the special teams coach just ripping his hair out. Again, certainly understand directional kicks, but it's shown in this game that, again, as you know, it's just five yards. It's made a difference. So Shelley will try again. You can tell from his body language he's frustrated. I still think they're going to go to Schweitzerhoff, but again, got to find a way to keep it in the field of play. But nope, he's going to go end over end. Right up the middle, caught at the 15-yard line. As Washington to the outside gets spun down at the 28-yard line. Malik Bootman gets the initial contact. So it'll be first and 10 from the 25. That's as good as a touchback. Well, from the 28, rather. Almost as good as a touchback. So Wilkes able to drive on their first possession of the half. See what they can do here. After Albright goes 10 plays, 55 yards, and 432. As this is some misdirection, and Tabora keeps, he'll get five yards. I think everybody in the stadium thought that Jeremiah Acker picked up the uh, handoff. But that is good enough for a gain of six. It'll be second and four from the 34. Abakur Fafana is the lone receiver on the far side. Joseph Lisinski is in at the running back. Oh, it's going to be some trickery. That's actually Acker who passes it back. Down up ahead for Forfana. He reaches and tries to make the catch. Could not keep his feet in bounds, and he dropped the ball. Turns right away to the official, hoping for a flag. But it was a good coverage. So it'll be third and four. Again, second and relatively short. That's a perfect time to try a little bit of that trickery. Derek Nelson and Richard Aremus are into the game as receivers. Nelson to the far side, Aremus to the near side along with Nick Yannick. Acker is in as the running back. But the QB, Tabora, back to throw. Finds a hole, tosses up ahead. It is caught by Nelson. He's shy. And he is knocked down. Great tackle. Omar Cisse. He'll be about a yard short. That's great defensive awareness, knowing exactly where he is on the field to stop the first down. Fourth and one from the 37-yard line. And I would imagine Wilkes is going to go for it. Nobody in the backfield. Trips to the right, two to the left. Tabora five yards deep in the shotgun. Back to throw. Looking for the quick hit. Can't get a toss over the middle to Nelson and is caught. As he brings it in at the 50 and falls forward to the 47. First down, Wilkes. 
Well, they move it back a yard to the 48, but same result for the Colonels. They'll continue the drive. Down to 5.45 to go in the third quarter. 40 to 35 lead for the Albright Lions. Remus, the lone receiver, far side. Nelson, near side. And it's going to be handed off right up the middle, over the 40-yard line, still on his feet, and diving forward to the 35 is Jeremiah Acker. Gain of 13 on the play, another first down for the Wilkes Colonels. Front down by Jason Smith. Another first down for Wilkes. The clock will roll with 5.12 to go in the third quarter. Late into the game, Nick Yannick. So he'll be a far side receiver along with Remus. And Nelson's on the near side with Kamal Reed in the backfield. Fake the hand off the Reed. The slant is caught, I believe. Great catch by Yannick as he was essentially hit at the same time. Gain of five on the play as he gets to the 30, second and five. Great concentration there. Again, the hit was timed perfectly. A great ball control by Yannick. So second and five from the 30. The Colonels are driving for the second, second time in the half. They fake the handoff again. Slung towards the near side. A lot of hand fighting. Incomplete. But there is a flag near the line. Nelson was the intended receiver. And where that flag is might be in the area of holding. So we'll listen along. Legal man downfield. Offense number 75. Five yard penalty. Second down. Uh, that's a good break for the Albright Lions. It stays second down, but it goes back five yards. It'll be second and ten from the 35. Ball back to the 35, where it will be second and ten. Certainly not an insurmountable hill for this offense, though. Stabora has Acker in the backfield. Wilton, two receivers, far side. And Nelson to the near. Back to throw, Tabora. Tosses it in deep, up ahead, and it's swatted away. Omar Cisse. Malik Bootman was the intended receiver. And I'll say, I saw some pretty serious holding around the outside. They probably declined anyway. Third and 10 from the 35 yard line. As Albright is starting to get some pressure. On the quarterback. Which is probably why they keep bringing in new running backs. Just to have them come in and block. Because now it's Acker. Third and ten with two receivers near side. Quick roll. And up the middle. But it's going to be snuffed out right away. Ryan Rapp. After the shovel pass. Turns into a two-yard loss. And let's see what Wilkes does here. Do you pin him deep? Or do you go for it? Doesn't look like the punter's in the game. They are going to go for it. Fourth and 13 from the 38-yard line. They need to get to the 25. Acker with the backfield, but throws back the throw. Under pressure, steps up against the rush. Now tosses over the middle. It is incomplete. Turnover on downs. So that pass came in just a little bit too hot. Armand Jefferson was in on the coverage. So a huge stop for the Lions. And they'll get a chance to add to their 40-35 to lead with 3.08 left to go. Here in the third quarter.
First and 10 from the 38 yard line. Lay back to throw. Trying to go deep with it near side sideline. A lot of hand fighting is caught, but out of bounds. Some good concentration by Zayner. But uh, just couldn't land in the field. Zag Neshiwat with the coverage, forcing him outside. It'll be second and ten. So second and ten here for the Lions. Three minutes to go. Play clock down to 10. They're not shy about taking their time and eating the entirety of the clock. Two receivers on either side. Blitz coming, but it's snuffed out. Handoff up the middle. And Tony Thorpe will get six on the play. Kind of a tough spot. Thought he got to that 44, but it's just the 43. It'll be third and five. And usually we say big play on third, down third and five. But again, Albright has not been shy about going for on fourth. So may not be completely stressful out there for these guys. They look blitz again. LeHay back to throw. Toss across to the near side. And it's caught at the 40-yard line. Zach Miller. Shouldered out of play. But it will be a first down to the Lions at the 39-yard line. So Albright starting the drive. 2-10 left to go in the third quarter. They are up by five. Touchdown here would make it two scores. Trayvon Ruffin is on the far side as far to that trips. Near side, Zayner. And Thorpe in the backfield is the running back. Thorpe up the middle, finds a hole, spins his way over the 35-yard line to the 33 before being wrestled down on the play. As John Van Letten was in on the tackle. Gain of seven on the play. It'll be second and three from the 32. And three, it's basically the same uh, formation. And with trips to the left. They fake the handoff this time as he stays in the block. Pressure from the right side. Pass up ahead is a sliding catch at the 22-yard line, but a flag flies the line. And it looks like this one might be coming back. Holding, 79 offense, 10 yard penalty, second down. So the hold to Ethan Jones, senior from New Holland, PA. And they'll bring the ball back to the 42 yard line. And it will be second and 13. Down to 102, left to go in the third quarter. All right, carrying a five point lead. Two receivers on either side with Thorpe in the backfield. And again, LaHaye, as he's been the entire game in the shotgun. Fakes the pass, then hands it off to Thorpe. He'll get to the 39, maybe 38 yard line. As the Lions are looking at a third and nine, they'll need to run one more play. It's about a three or four second difference between the play clock and the game clock. So this next play will certainly be the last of the third quarter. As both teams have kind of stepped up defensively. We've only had two scores in this third quarter. Third and nine. Same formation. Only rushing three for the line, but they bring a fourth on a blitz. Slanted across. That is caught at the 34-yard line, but met right away. Pass complete to 
as in on the tackle was Nakaneshiwat. And that'll be enough to uh, kill the uh, third quarter play. We head to the fourth. Albright leading 40-35. Back in a moment as you're watching Albright College Football. Welcome back, everybody. Once again, we are live from Shirk Stadium in Reading, Pennsylvania. We're set up for a fun finish as Albright is leading 40 to 35. They're marching, but they've got to deal with a fourth and three from the 32 yard line. As we start the fourth quarter and switch sides, Albright in the black, Wilkes in the white. Well, hey, in the shotgun with two receivers on either side, one man in the backfield, that's Tony Thorpe. Ready to go. The fake the handoff to Thorpe, but. Timeout called right before the snap by Albright. This will be their first charge timeout. And it's a big play, obviously, fourth and three, clinging to a five-point lead. So certainly want to take a look at that. So far in this game, Albright is four for six on fourth down conversions. Leading the time of possession battle, 24-58 to 20-02. And so far, they are outgaining the Colonels 304 to 253. Scores in that third quarter. Wilkes got on the board first. A Derek Nelson 45 yard pass from Jose Tabora. Justin, Justin Pollock's kick was good at the 12 15 mark to make it a 35 34 lead for Wilkes. But then at the 7 38 mark, it was Kevin Zayner picking up a 13 yard pass from his QB, Jimmy LaHaye. The two-point conversion was no good. And that's where we stand, 40 to 35. So the timeout over. Again, that's just the first charge timeout to Albright. Fourth and three from the 32. Again, two receivers on either side. Here comes the snap. The little lineman in. The pass is up ahead, and it'll go incomplete. Timing pattern just doesn't quite connect. Trayvon Ruffin had it go sailing over his head. It'll turn over on downs, first and 10 for the Colonels. That's a big stop there for Wilkes. As Zach Neshiwat was in on the coverage. He's had himself a fantastic game, the sophomore. So a chance here for the Colonels to once again take the lead. 14.54 to go in the fourth quarter. Looks, looks like they might be opening it up a little bit. Acker in the backfield as the running back, but trips to the left. Tabora, handoff to Acker, looking for help up the middle, but he is met at the 30-yard line. Yamir Lowry, the senior from Patterson, New Jersey, makes the tackle. may have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. At least second and 10 from the 32. I think that was a pretty fortunate spot for the Colonels. So second and 10. As they'll bunch it up more with only one receiver to the near side. Hand off to Acker, has got to get around the edge. He does, but he is met. Shy of the 35-yard line. 
by Armand Jefferson. A gain of three on the play, second, actually third and seven from the 35. So they'll go back to the spread formation with three to the near. One in the backfield and one receiver far. Tabora back to throw. Under pressure, steps under the pocket, settles, fires over the middle, and is caught by Nelson at the 50-yard line. So it'll be a first down by Wilkes. It'll be first and 10 from their own 49, so one yard shy of the center line. 13-31 to go here in the fourth quarter. With all right leading, 40-35. to 35. Now two receivers near. And they are sticking with Acker in the backfield, but haven't used him a ton. Now a little bit of an end around for Yannick. Yannick to the outside. He's thrown hard out of bounds by uh, Daniel Vital. Take Yannick on the carry. He'll get a gain of two out of to the 49-yard line as the Colonels cross over into Lion territory. So second and eight for Wilkes. They'll spread it again with three to the near side. Switch in the backfield. Back to throw. Rolling out to the near side. Looking for anybody's help. He'll bring it down. Cut to the middle. Get some positive yards before he's wrestled down by Tyler Foster. As he gets to the 45, and it'll be third and four. After that gain of four on the play. Gain to the 45, where it will be third down and four. So another possibility here to stop for Albright. They've done a solid job of getting to these third and midway plays, third and four through seven. But Wilkes coming into the quarter, six for 10 on third down conversions. Motion again by Acker in the backfield. Tabora back to throw. Quick hit it to Nelson at the 40 yard line. And that'll be good enough for a first down. As on the tackles, Chris Holbrook. So they may be playing with fire a little bit, but these third and threes, fours through sevens are working out well for Wilkes. Certainly don't want a steady diet of those. But they can feel confident that they can convert on these. So it'll be first and 10 from the 40-yard line. This clock goes down to 11.32 to go in the fourth quarter. Albright leading by five. A lot of motion on that defensive line. Tabora fakes the handoff, toss over the middle, and it's incomplete. Pass intended for Nate Whitaker. But maybe a bit of a cross up on the play and on his route. And right away, Tabora comes out and talks to his freshman receiver. Just to try to get on the same page. It'll be second and 10 from the 40, 11 14 to go. They'll bunch it up with trips tight to the far side, one receiver near side. Quarterback back to throw over the middle. It is caught at the 35-yard line. And uh, rumbling forward, Bryce Harris in the tight end. And he gets over the 30 for a first down. They get credit to the 29-yard line. And first and 10 for the Colonels. So again, are marching. They'll spread it out with receivers now to the near side. Two to the near, one to the far. High snap as the quarterback will keep. 
And he'll cut to the outside. Tabor gets to the 25-yard line. He is dragged down by Armand Jefferson. He makes it to the 22-yard line. So it'll be a second and seven, or at least second and three on that gain of seven. Got to get to the 19-yard line for the first down, but again, it's just second down. And right now, Wilkes very confident offensively right now. He'll go trips wide to the far side. And Acker in the backfield. They try, they fake the handoff to Acker, bringing it down is Tabora. He was decked at the line of scrimmage. That will go for no gain, third and three from the 22. Ryan Rapp was in on the tackle. So another big third down play. At this point, Wilkes would probably go for it on fourth anyway, but they've been able to convert these third downs. Defense for Albright might be getting a little tired. Tabora back to throw. Looks near side, then over the middle. Just tosses it into space. It is caught, but well shy of the first down. Maybe no gain for Jeremiah Acker. There were three white-clad receivers for the Wilkes Colonels. As again, the QB, Tabora, was under duress and just wanted to throw it to anybody friendly, and he was very fortunate that Acker was there to pick it up. But it is fourth and three. From the 22-yard line, 8.30 to go in the fourth. Albright leading by five. Crowd making noise. Tabora back to throw. Steps inside the pocket, and he will get the first down as there's no containment. He'll slide very late. But he'll get to the 18-yard line. It'll be a first and 10 for the Colonels. Heads up play by Jose Tabora. Again, he looked at all five possibilities as far as receivers are concerned, saw nothing, and then saw the hole as the Lions were just unable to contain him in the backfield. So new life once again for the Wilkes Colonels. In the red zone, first and 10 from the 18. Clock continues to roll. Eight minutes to go in the fourth. All right leading, 40 to 35. Nelson, lone receiver on the far side with Yannick near side. And in the backfield is Acker. They will fake the handoff to Acker, pass over the middle, and it's incomplete. Intended for Yannick, who just cut across the 15 yard line but could not connect. It'll be second and 10. And there have been a number of these second down and 10 or even longer plays for Wilkes, but they again, they've had no panic. Very confident in their second and long, third and long offense. But they will spread it out with five wide receivers, nobody in the backfield, and flag flies right after the snap. It'll be a false start. And that's the kind of break that Albright's been waiting for. I will say that Wilkes has been very disciplined I haven't seen a ton of penalties from them. Offense. All 11 players were not set for one second prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty. Second. So a team penalty. I don't know that one you hear of all that often. But it is going to be moved back to the 23-yard line. It'll be second and 15. So they'll need to get to the eight for the first down. They'll run the clock, 7.39 to go. And the referee begging him to run the clock, it took a few seconds. That might be a break for Wilkes later in the game. Of course, it might also be a break for Albright. QB back to throw, looking over the middle, now has to step up the pocket. They have to try to contain him, gets to the 15 yard line to the 10. Shoulders forward, runs over him and gets to the six yard line. That'll be a first down, pushing and shoving in the pile. Jose Tabora. Couldn't do it with his arm, so he did it with his legs. 
He gets to the six. It'll be first and goal for the Colonels. And every time you think that they are stopped, they find a way. A 17-yard run, Vieira on the tackle. Now they're in the eye. A new wrinkle in the offense as this is pitched out to Acker. Acker has a blocker in front of him, forced to the outside, and he is tackled as he was met at the eight. May have gotten to the six, the original line of scrimmage. But either way, great pursuit by the Lion defense. Well, they give him maybe a little bit of forward progress. It'll be second. Well, they give him, actually, they cut him for a yard. Second and goal from the seven. Nobody in the backfield. Five receivers trips to the right. Tabora. Barking out signals. Back to throw. Right up the middle. But he is tackled. He reaches for the two. Meeting him there was Nate right, Steffen. And a timeout called here by Albright. This will be their second charge timeout, which we're under six minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Timeout, Albright, second and a half. They want to have time just in case Wilkes scores. And they've such a, done such a good job of changing up their offense. Yeah, and they spread it out five wide, which means the line's a little bit spread out. And Taboro made no mistake with it. Knew there was going to be a hole up the middle. And turned that into a rush of five yards. As mentioned, Nate Steffen was in on the tackle. But a back and forth game. Who will score last? That might be uh, the finish, uh, the winner of this game. Who will get that stop and, or who will get that last score? We shall see. Ball spotted on the two-yard line. Again, this is the second charge timeout to the Albright Lions. Uh, Wilkes is marching. It's a 40-35 to 35 lead for Albright. Desperately trying to hang on to pick up their first win of the season. Only two receivers, but they are spread out well beyond the numbers. Nobody in the backfield. Tabora in the shotgun. They pile up the line on the right side. As Acker's in there as well, they're going to go to that right side, and it'll be a touchdown for Tabora. Some great push on that line with help from Acker, and Tabora was able to waltz on in for the touchdown. Wilkes takes a one-point lead. Pending the PAT or two-point conversion. Little surprised that they don't go for two here. To try to make it a field goal to tie instead of a field goal to win. Well, good job by Albright to stay with it. Again, they try the gate play. It never, ever, I shouldn't say that, rarely works. So here comes the extra point attempt. And it is good. Extra Saw the Wilkes Colonels. They take a 42 to 40 lead. 555 remaining in the fourth quarter. So there is time for the Albright Lions to work. As that drive goes 17 plays, 68 yards. And it lasted just shy of nine minutes. Finished off by a Jose Tavara run of two yards. So talk about eating some serious time. That is by far the longest drive of the game. Conversely, the second longest drive of the game was Wilkes' first scoring drive. That only lasted 10 plays, 60 yards, and uh, four minutes and uh, 40 seconds. This one close to doubling that time. Yeah, with the Lions defense stuck on the field for a long time.
So let's see how Albright finds a way to respond. They've had opportunities a number of times to go up by a couple of scores. They were actually up by a couple of scores late in the first half. But now find themselves down by two. Despirito ready to kick off. With Holbrook and Rosselli back deep. But it's a low kick. Hops up and picked up at the 25-yard line by Dogba. Dogba to the 35, spins his way forward, and then wrestled down at the 37-yard line. So a pretty good field for Albright to work with. Not exactly pinned in their own red zone. But still, 60-plus yards to go. They don't need a touchdown. They need a field goal. But every time they've been in field goal, seemingly field goal territory, they've elected to go for it on fourth down. But late in the game, they may decide to just take the points if they can get that far deep into the red zone. Here we go. First and 10 from their own 37-yard line. They look blitz as they rush five. Pitched out to the outside. And he gets to the 40-yard line before being tackled down. Anthony Rush getting some action late in this game. Rush, the freshman from Montgomery Village, Maryland, gets to the 40-yard line. Well, they call it the 41. It'll be second and six. They fake the handoff, pressure from the blind side, but tossed over the near side. A nice lunging catch by Zach Miller. He's forced out of bounds, but it's a first down for Albright. It'll be first and 10 from the Wilkes 40 yard line. Clock rolls with four, actually 5.07 to go in the fourth quarter. Wilkes leading by two. A little bit of a hurry here as LaHay. Tosses over, makes the catch, now cut to the inside. Getting tackled on the play was Rush after the nice high catch. Gain of at least two. So he gets to the 35 yard line, second and eight. Actually, 38 yard line, second and eight. Bud Moyer on the tackle. 4.30 and counting. Just one timeout for the Lions, by the way. LaHaye picks up the low snap and pitches it to the outside. Trying to move through his rush, but he is met shy of the 35 yard line. May have gotten a yard. Vinnie Werner was in on the tackle. They give credit to the tackle to Cole Jesmer as well. Definitely four down territory. If everything before this was four down territory, this certainly is. So we're under four minutes to go. Ball placed between the 41 and 42. Actually, 36 and 37. We'll call it third and six. Thorpe in the backfield. Timeout call. No, flag flies. False start. Oh, very last thing that the Lions needed there. False start, 81 offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Trevon Ruffin jumped a little bit too soon. So we move back to the 41-yard line. It's third and 11. Again, four down territory anyway. Certainly don't want to go the wrong direction. LaHaye, back to throw. Tosses up ahead, it's caught at the 37 yard line. Stutter step to the outside of the 35 and he's met there. As that pass was complete to Ruffin. And this could be the game right here as we're down to 317 and counting to go. It'll be fourth and five from the 35. Crowd getting into it as they look blitz. Flag flies. And it should be offside. Certainly looked like there were a couple of colonels who were in the neutral zone. Let's see. 
Huge call here. This could move the chains, as you may have heard that fan yell. But we have no indication on what the call is going to be. Neither line is moving. Again, the look of a blitz may have forced the move, and they're going to move the ball forward. Offside. Defense number 73, five-yard penalty, results in a first down. Huge penalty on Wilkes. It'll be first and 10 from the 30, under three minutes to go. As the entire offense looks for the play. Three receivers in, along with the tight end, Forbes, who's on the outside. LaHaye, back to throw, immediate pressure. Pass ahead is caught at the 27-yard line to the outside and forced out of bounds was Kevin Zayner. And it looks like that will be a gain of eight to the 22-yard line. Clock rolls, 2.28 to go. Second and two. A 42-40 lead for Wilkes as they're trying to hang on and keep their season undefeated. Uh, whistles blow, stopping the clock at 2.18 left. Not sure if there's a clock issue here. That doesn't look like it. I'm not sure why they would have stopped it. That could be a break for Wilkes. As now it'll roll. They reset the play clock to 25. So that was the issue. Game clock is at 2.08. Forbes in motion. Pitched out. Thorpe trying to cut right back up the middle. Gets to the 20-yard line, and he is tackled at the 15 as he buries to the 12. It'll be good enough for a first down. So we're down to 1.59 to go. They move the sticks and run the clock. Just one timeout remaining for Albright. They're down by two, but they would love a touchdown here. LaHaye, back to throw. Looking end zone to the near side. It's intercepted. It is intercepted in the end zone. Pass was intended for Zach Miller. But Zach Neshawat cuts him off on his route and it may have just sealed this game for the Wilkes Colonels. Well, we've called Neshiwat's name a lot in this game. We've called his name a lot, so it does figure that he would be a di big difference maker in what could be the deciding play of this contest. So after the touchback, it'll be first and 10 from the 20. Bad news for Albright gets worse. They only have one timeout, so they need to find a way to get that ball back. They might need just one first down, if that. Tabora's in the shotgun with Acker next to him. I would imagine Acker's going to get the ball here. They fake it to Acker. Tabora keeps it himself, gets to the outside, and then powers his way to the 24-yard line. I thought he was hit at the 20, but he got some contact there, and it was enough to slow him down but not stop him as a timeout will be called. As Albright does call the final timeout, and if we do our math, if they do force a three and out, they could get the ball back with about 40 seconds left. But again, with no timeouts and presumably after a punt. So they would still have to drive the ball 50, 60 yards in that short amount of time. So right now, I'm sure the defensive coaching staff for Albright is asking for a turnover. They're not going to get a turnover the way they've gotten two before by way of interception. I can't imagine Wilkes throwing the ball at all here, especially since Acker's been successful and Tobora, especially here in the second half, has been so successful running the ball. 
They will still spread it out a bit with three receivers. It'll be second and six from the 24-yard line. Lions need a big defensive play. Tabora hands it off. Moving the pile forward is Ackers. He gets to about the 34, but the clock will roll. Huge stop needed here. If Wilkes gets the first down, this game will be over. Third and three. As the ball is placed at the 27. Under a minute to go. Play clock is at 10. They may just call the timeout to eat as much clock as possible. That's exactly what's going to happen. So with 46.8 seconds left to go, Wilkes calls their first timeout of the game, and this will be uh, the game decider. If Wilkes gets the first down, it's over. If they don't, they'll actually be able to bring it down to about the 25-second mark before they're forced to punt. So it wouldn't give Albright a whole lot of time. What would be interesting is if they do receive a punt, wow, Albright has already brought back two kickoffs. The punts are a completely different story. That might be what they need here. Get the stop here first. That's the first goal. Force the punt and then roll the dice from there. And I would certainly imagine that Jimmy LaHaye and anyone else who has an arm out there is warming up to try to throw it deep, as deep as possible, if they get the opportunity. There are also other options if it gets there, including some razzle-dazzle. But right now, first things first, third and three for Wilkes from their own 27. They need to get to the 30. With 46 seconds left, and Wilkes carrying a two-point lead. They spread it out. Nobody in the backfield. Tabora brings it down, moves it forward. He gets the first down, and that'll be the ball game. Four on the he gains about four to about the 28-yard line. They'll stop the clock to move the sticks. But now they'll run it. They'll just have to take one knee. And that will do it. For the second straight week, a tight game for Albright goes in the wrong direction as they take the knee to close it out. Final score, Wilkes 42, Albright 40. And last week, it was a last-second heartbreak. This week, opportunities missed.